Hi, uh, okay, so this is section three of key area three of unit two of higher human biology, and we are looking at contraception. Now, an important point to make before we get started is, if you get test or exam questions about contraception and you start spouting off stuff that you learned in PSE, it is not going to be enough to gain you marks. You must focus, when we're talking about contraception, on the biology of it, the biology of preventing sperm and ova from meeting, or sperm and eggs from meeting, of preventing sperm and ova from being produced, or preventing implantation of the zygote into the endometrium. You have to make it sciency. If it's not sciency, you're not going to get the marks. Okay, so in general, in terms of contraception, there are two main categories that we are going to look at. We're going to look at physical methods and chemical methods. And basically, contraception is just ways that we can reduce or minimise the chances of a pregnancy happening. So physical methods, chemical methods are what we're going to look at in this video. Okay, and again, these are all based on the knowledge of biology of fertility. Understanding how people get pregnant helps us understand how to stop that from happening. If we had no idea how people get pregnant, we'd have no idea how to stop it. Okay, so you've got physical methods of contraception involve physically preventing sperm and egg from meeting. Now, there is something in here that bothers me, okay, and I'll get to it in a second. So physical methods of contraception include barriers and sterilization, and this last one is the one that bothers me. The SQA course documents specify that IUDs are a physical contraception method. They're not. They release chemicals that prevent sperm and egg from uh, being, or egg egg implantation but under the SQA documents an IUD is a physical method of contraception I suppose you could count the IUD sitting there is going to stop anything from growing inside the uterus mm -hmm. like you'll see a picture of it in a few minutes but in real life IUDs are chemical methods of contraception I don't know if it's maybe just a typo in the course documents I'm going to admit though that I don't understand why they've called it a physical contraception method Okay, so in terms of barriers, you've probably heard of these ones as it is, or at least you've definitely heard of the first one, I'd like to hope. So barriers for methods of contraception include the most common one, which is condoms, which physically prevent the sperm from being able to enter the vagina. Again, that's what you need to be able to describe. The bits and brackets are the sciency things that actually happen. So condoms prevent sperm actually entering the vagina, and obviously if they're not in the vagina, they cannot swim up to the oviduct to meet an ova. A diaphragm is one which blocks access to the, cer the cervix from the sperm, so sperm cannot get into it because they are being blocked. And a cervical cap also blocks access from the sperm to the cervix. So both of these ones block the sperm actually being able to get in and travel again to the ova. Okay. Sterilization is usually a, so it's a different barrier method, again, preventing sperm and ova from meeting. Um, it's usually a permanent surgery to prevent sperm coming into contact with the eggs or ova. Uh, so it can happen in females. Females can have their oviducts either banded, so they're tied and then a very tight band is put around them that prevents the ova from traveling down them. Cauterized involves cutting them and then burning the ends uh, to basically seal off the ends of them or tied and cut. So the idea is you tie elastic bands or um, maybe even staples around two areas and then you snip through the middle and that again prevents the ova traveling down the oviduct into the uterus and that means that sperm also cannot travel up the oviduct to meet the ova. This can also happen in males, so male sterilization you can see in the diagram just do, just here, this is hard, just here, there, there, okay, and that involves cutting the sperm duct. If you cut the sperm duct the idea is the sperm cannot travel up through the sperm duct out through the um, urethra and that prevents them coming into contact with the ova again. And that's the one that generally talked about more here in TVs a lot is people talking about getting a vasectomy it's males getting their tubes cut basically. Uh, in terms of the chemical methods of contraception again there are a few different ones that we're going to talk about but these again it's all just about preventing sperm and the production or preventing fertilization or implantation happening so just basically preventing various different stages of um, anything that could occur to potentially produce a zygote. So uh, the ones we're going to talk about is there's hormones, there is spermicide, and there are IUDs. And again, this little uh, pausing over IUD area is I've put it under chemical methods, but the SQA have, under course documents say it's a physical method. So I'm a little bit at a loss of what, what to count as. So hormonal contraceptives tend to be synthetic, so human-made hormones that mimic sex hormones. So, for example, the contraceptive pill is either estrogen and progesterone or synthetic 
uh, equivalents of that. And what they do is they prevent production of FSH. If we remember, normal estrogen inside the body uh, inhibits FSH production, inhibiting follicle production. So if you take artificial estrogen, you inhibit FSH production, meaning no follicles. So that should mean no pregnancy. The mini pill is only made of progesterone and that thickens cervical mucus. Now, if the, th the cervix is blocked by really, really thick mucus, that should stop the sperm getting from the vagina through the cervix into the uterus. And then finally, we've got the morning after pill. Now, the morning after pill prevents implantation of the zygote into the endometrium. So we're assuming that a fertilized ova exists but instead of allowing the zygote to implant into the endometrium and grow, the morning after pill basically makes the zygote really slippery so it can't attach to the endometrium. So it uh, goes the normal route of menstrual cycle. It's kind of your last resort one mm -hmm. is you would use it for having assumed you've not had either of the other ones really. The morning after the pill is the reason why, again, a lot of uh, more conservative religious groups have an issue with the morning after pill because they consider it to be like a tiny abortion because effectively you have had conception happen. And so according to certain religious groups, you have had a life forming um, and therefore not allowing that life to, to develop is bad morally. Uh, spermicides, they kind of do what they say on the tin. Uh, so most barrier methods of contraception include the use of some kind of spermicide. And basically spermicide is just a thing that kills sperm. It's a bit like a kind of gel, usually a bit of a cream, a bit of a gel. But the idea is they, when sperm come into contact with it, it kills them. It's like a herbicide that you put on plants. So the kind of thing you use to kill pests on plants, you can have a similar one to kill sperms as a type of pest, I guess. Uh, so when you use diaphragms or cervical caps and even some different condoms, they have spermicides on them. And the idea is when the sperm comes into contact with the spermicide on it, the sperm then die. OK, now IUDs. And again, we put this big cautionary note. In reality, they are chemical methods of contraception because they release copper, which prevents implantation and thickens cervical mucus. So they're doing a belt and braces type approach. Number one is thickening the cervical mucus, less chance of a sperm getting in. And number two, preventing implantation. So say there is a fertilized ova, they prevent it from binding to the endometrium. Now, IUDs are preferable for a lot of women people uh, because they last between five and 10 years. And they are inserted by a doctor or nurse or medical professional into the uterus okay so they have to be done by a medical professional and because of that long lasting thing you don't get any of the risks like oh you forgot to take your pill or oh you were a bit worse for wear and you didn't use a condom that night um so it's it's much more a much preferred method of contraception for certain people yeah. it's Some, a coil isn't it isn't it's coil, as people yeah. say it's called the coil that's uh -huh. what we're talking about here really um, some IUDs are also impregnated with progesterone to enhance the th cervical thickening mucus effect as well. So again, this is why I and every other source classes it as a chemical, and it's also why I don't understand the SQA class as it's a physical. It's a physical thing that's in there, I guess. No, but it's releasing but it's, chemicals. It's, it's releasing like the, a chemical, the yeah. implant into but you the have to put a physical thing in to release the chemicals. <laughs> I, I suppose, yeah, kind of. OK, um, now IUD, again, it's quite a handy w thing to know what it stands for. So it stands for intrauterine device. So the idea is, you know, it's a thing that's put into the uterus. That's what it does. And then again, this is just a nice diagram comparing the effectiveness on them. So you've got the very the least effective thing. So withdrawal obviously being the completely least effective thing because it's just stupidity and spermicides actually aren't very effective at all. And then in terms of the most effective things are things like your implants and your IUDs, because obviously they don't require you to potentially forget to accidentally take a pill or forget to have a condom or any of these things. So they're things you can't really forget. And obviously female sterilization vasectomy, pretty effective because they're saying, well, it physically can't get there anymore. And if it can't get there, it can't interact with the other one. So it can't happen. So you can kind of need to know what is the least effective going up in effectiveness to the most effective. It's worth paying attention to that, though, that's saying less than one pregnancy per hundred women in one year. No method of contraception, as far as we know, is completely and utterly bulletproof in contraception. Even with female and male sterilization, we have found like vasectomies, sometimes they don't take, sometimes the tubes heal themselves back together. It does depend on the individual. OK, so to summarize, barrier methods are physical methods of contraception. They prevent sperm entering the cervix or uterus by forming a barrier.
Okay, sterilization is a physical method. It prevents the release of sperm or the release of an ova into the oviduct. Okay, so an IUD, let's say it's physical because that's what the SQA wants you to say, that it releases copper which prevents implantation. The contraceptive pill is a chemical one and it mimics the negative feedback um, to prevent the release or prevent the production and release of FSH and LH. Okay, the mini pill is chemical and that thickens cervical mucus. And the morning after pill is also chemical and it prevents ovulation or implantation of an already potentially fertilised zygote. Okay, and that's everything you need to know about contraception and that is the whole of key area three covered. Done. Um, so the next key area is... Anti and postnatal screening. Oh, it is, anti and postnatal screening. So we'll say, let's say you do get pregnant, how do you monitor the, the health of the fetus that is growing inside of you? And then also what tests are done after the baby is born to monitor health as well. See you then.